In this presentation, we will enter a reversing entry related to accounts receivable within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, we can go to the view drop down up top and open windows list. We're going to now enter a reversing entry. This is the first time we've looked at a reversing entry. Reversing entries are going to be there for some of the adjusting entries, but not all of the adjusting entries. And they're going to be there to really help us separate between the accounting department or the normal bookkeeping process and the adjusting process and this could be very distinct if you think about it as two distinct people or two distinct entities or departments that are doing these two things which is often the case in other words if we were doing bookkeeping we may want to work with a cpa firm or to in order to do these adjusting entries and in order to to make this adjustment entry process work best then whoever's doing the adjusting entries, whether it be us or a different department, could then make the reversing entries in order to make life easier be between the two. In other words, we don't want the normal day-to-day -day bookkeeping process, whether it be done by ourselves or another bookkeeper, to be interrupted or have to change for some way because of these adjusting entries. We would like to enter the adjustments, make the financial statements correct on an accrual basis as best we can as of a specific point in time, and not then uh, disturb the flow of just what has to happen normally for the normal accounting process. So in order to do that, we need to do some of these reversing entries. So let's think about what we have done so far for this uh, accounts receivable reversing entry, and then we'll think about how, how can we reverse it. Or we, we'll, <laughs> we'll take a look at the adjusting entry, what we've done so far, and then think about how we can reverse it. Okay, so let's go to the drop down. We're going to go to the reports up top and we're going to scroll down to company and financial. We're looking for the balance sheet standard. We're looking for the balance sheet standard report. We're going to change the dates in the custom reports up top. So we will go to custom reports. Dates we're going to look for are 010119 to 022819. So we're, our cutoff date's going to be 228. We have the range so that when we kind of drill down, I'll use the zoom in then it'll have the range data for the transaction detail. So we're gonna say, okay. We're focusing in here on accounts receivable. We made an adjustment to accounts receivable in order to pull information into the current time period. Before we look at that, let's first pull the other uh, statement, the income statement or profit and loss report, because that's a little bit easier to, to think about this transaction and why we're doing it. So we're going to go to the reports drop down. We're going to go to the company and financial and look for that profit and loss report, the income statement. Select that item and we're going to change those dates to 010111 um, let's say 010119 to 02-2819. And so this is 2009. That's that's a long time ago. So we're going to say there we go. Now we've got this information. Now this is the information that we're going to be dealing with for this, this either month or two months of operations that we are considering here are in cutoff being, being February 28th, the end of February. And what we're looking at is this merchandise sales here. What we're saying is we double click on here. We've got this adjusting entry that we, we entered here. We've got this adjustment that happened as of the end of the time period. Why did we enter that adjustment once again? To tell that story, let's close this back out. I'm going to look at the first day of the next time period, which is going to be 030119. Let's go to the month of it, 031519, the first 15 days of March. First 15 days of March here. And we have this invoice, or this sale. If we double click on it, we will see that it's an invoice. And our goal here was to go through the, the sales that happened in the beginning of March, the invoices that we created, and determine if any of those, the work had actually been done in the prior month, in February. And if so, then we want to pull the revenue back to February because QuickBooks uses the invoice to drive when revenue is created. But when revenue should be recorded is when the work was done. So it's very possible that, especially with, with service companies like bookkeeping, law firms, 
that we did the work in the following month, in March, but didn't build them. We did the work in February, the prior month, but didn't build them until the following month, March, and therefore the revenue is not really in the correct period. In our case here, we have inventory, still possible with inventory, in that uh, when do we do the work with inventory? It's when we ship the inventory. Basically, we want to look at the shipping documentation. That's when we completed our job. That's when we should be recognizing the revenue. And so if this case we're saying that the invoice went out after the month in which we shipped the goods. So therefore, we shipped and earned the inventory in February. And the invoice went out in March for whatever reason. So what we had to do then is pull this back into February. We didn't do, we could do this by, if we double click on this, you could change the date of this invoice and that would work to some degree, but we don't typically like doing that because it, it, uh, it's, it, it's going to throw off the other things that will be connected to it. The invoice will be connected to other items. And if the client was to ask us when we invoice them, then our date would be wrong within here because we would have entered it back into the prior month in order to kind of fix this problem. So we don't typically want to change the invoice date. What we're going to do instead is do with the adjusting entry and that's what we did. So note that this invoice, when we create this invoice, as we've explained a couple times when we made the invoice, it's actually much more complicated than we may think. There's a lot of things happening here. We got the invoice happens, we got the sales tax, so we've got uh, accounts receivable going up, that's what happens with an invoice. Then we've got the revenue going up, but it only goes up by 500, whereas the accounts receivable went up by 525. The difference is 25, and that's going to be sales tax payable that's going up, that's what we owe to the state. And then there's also going to be the cost of goods sold that's happening here, and that's not even on the invoice, even though the invoice drives it and the reduction of inventory. And where do we find those? It's going to be under lists. It's going to be under items. And we sold an ELP. So ELP, I'll double click that. There's the cost. So the journal entry, closing this back out, closing this back out, related to this invoice then, looks something like this. And I'm going to use debits and credits here because this is one area that I just don't think we can avoid the debits and credits. Uh, it doesn't make it easier and it, we could avoid it, but it doesn't make things easier. So here's going to be the journal entry that we have. And we, that, so we increase accounts receivable with a debit. We increase sales with a credit. We increase sales payable with a credit. And then we decrease inventory with a credit and cost of goods sold, the expense related to it is a credit. So you can see on, if you think about this, the accounts receivable, the asset went up by the accounts receivable here and went down by the inventory which is a net of 125 and the other side of it is sales uh well you can think of sales and i'm going to include the sales tax what we're going to get and net that out against the cost of goods sold is going to be uh the the one the 125. so you can think about this journal entry and the debits and credits involved in it but this is what happened. What we want to do now is recognize that this is what we did. If we go back to QuickBooks to, to pull this journal entry back into the current time period. In other words, closing this back out, closing this back out. We, we enter the journal entry related to this transaction as of the end of our time period, our cutoff date, which is February 28th. So changing the dates back to 010119 to 022819. If we double click on the merchandise sales and scroll down, then we're going to say there's that 500. There's the adjusting entry, which is part of uh, this sales item that we had. So if we check all of these accounts, in other words, we'll find these adjusting entries, which will say uh, adjusting entry. Uh, related to these transactions. So now, now the problem is that, of course, now we've entered this two times because we entered it into March or February where it should be, but it's also in there in March and we never deleted that invoice. Now, again, we could delete the invoice in March because now it's in there in February, but we don't want to do that because we want the invoice driving 
this documentation, what we then can do is we can uh, reverse our adjusting entries. And we typically do that as of the first day of the next time period. So we're going to reverse it as of the first day of the following time period. Now note, if I, if I go back to the next time period, 03, 01, 19, to 03, 15, 19, this entry didn't happen until the second day. And it could have happened on the fifth day or something like that. And we, we still would typically, so the question you may have is why do we reverse it as of March 1st? We should reverse it as of uh, March 2nd or whenever the invoice happened. Because if we reverse it as of March 1st, then they won't match out. We'll be wrong for two days or, or a day. And if it was, if the gap was larger, then we'd be wrong for a longer period of time. And the reason is because we're going to say that it doesn't really matter as long as we're aware of it and we're correct on a periodic basis. It's right. It's going to be correct when we make the financial statements. And it's easier for us to go back in and say, where are the reversing entries if they're all in there as of the same date? If we start scattering around the reversing entries into multiple dates, it's going to be harder for us to find. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say all reversing entries happen on the first day of the following month. We know that's not exactly right because it's going to make things incorrect until in this case, the second day, but that it'll be right as of the, as of the month end. And that's what we, that's, we're okay to the benefits outweigh the costs of doing that. So that's what we're going to do a reversing entry as of the first day of the next month. In essence, just reversing this. Now thinking about how to do the reversing entry is, you know, with this many accounts, it's a little difficult. All, all we need, if you write down the only way to do this, or the way I would do this is to write down the actual sales journal entry and then just reverse it. So I wouldn't even change the order of the accounts. Like normally you'd have the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. I would just take, take this entire thing and we're going to say it's here, but I'm just going to change this. So here we had a debit on this side. We're going to reverse it with a credit 525. We had a credit on this side. We're going to reverse it with a debit. We had a credit on this side. We're going to reverse it with a with a debit. We had um, a debit here. We're going to reverse it with a credit. And we had a credit here. We're going to reverse it with a debit. So it's far easier to do this. It's far easier to not put the debits on top and just think of and think of it in the same order and just reverse what we did in the, in this journal tree. So. And if you, if you know debits and credits, I mean, if you're working with, then obviously normally we should have the debits on top. That's kind of just a convention. It doesn't have to be that way, but the convention is to have the debits on top. And um, this could be one journal entry or two, depending on, on what convention we're using. So most people think about it this way when they write it by hand as two journal entries. And so the easiest thing to do is write it by hand and then just go line by line and just reverse it. And then we'll be good. So that's what we're going to do here. Now we're just going to enter this and we're just going to enter it as a journal entry. Again, I don't think there's any benefit of trying to do this with registers because it doesn't really make things any easier. So we're going to go back here. We're going to go back to our uh, journal entries and we're going to go to company. We're going to go to make uh, general journal entries. And then we're going to make it as the first, this is a reversing entry. So it's going to be the first day of the next month. Always the first day of the next month. It's going to be on 3-1. And so then I'm just going to follow our template here, which is first account's going to be accounts receivable. So we're going to say accounts receivable. Don't pick up the payable again like I did last time. And that's going to be for 525. And this time we're going to credit it 525. Let's display backwards 525 and then the memo is going to be something like this here reversing entry for invoice recorded in March but work done in February so this is the reversing entry for that journal entry and then the name we have to have a name because we're doing something to accounts receivable it won't let us post it if we don't we want to make sure it's the same name that was on the invoice and on the adjusting entry which was Sam the guitar man that's the customer we had there now the second account, if we just go back here, we're going to just say that's going to be the sales item. So sales, we're going to debit it 500. So sales, if I select the drop down, 
We want merchandise sales. That's the one we want. Merchandise sales. Not 525, but 500. It's going to be the one. We are going to put the same uh, memo here. So we'll just copy that. I'm going to copy it and put that here. Don't really need the name for the sales item because we're not tracking it with a subsidiary account. It's going to pick up the difference for us because that's it just always does that. That's what it's, it's trying to say, hey, you need $25 or we're not going to let you record this. And that's going to be uh, sales tax payable. That's the liability that we're going to sales tax payable. It's going to be this item. So we'll pick that up. And that one needs a vendor too. Uh, the last one, this was a customer. This one needs a vendor because QuickBooks will be mad at us and won't let us post it if we don't have the vendor because once again, it needs to pick up the subsidiary account. And we took this one to the New York State sales tax. So we just want to make sure to pick up the same vendor so that subsidiary accounts don't get messed up. And then the other two things that happen is we have the cost of goods sold. We're going to credit for 400. And so if we select the drop down, that's going to be like an expense or cost of goods sold, special expense. Credit uh, for 400. And I'm going to paste these here again. And then the last piece was inventory. We'll debit for 400. And there we have that. Now, if you, if you look at this journal entry, you, it should, I mean, if you know debits and credits, you work with debits, this should look very unnatural. It should be like everything is, you know, what, what <laughs> you know, the cost of goods sold is going down and the, and the inventory is going up. It, it should look kind of, kind of weird because we're doing, especially to these, these items, the cost of goods sold and uh, the sales are, should look very backwards, but that's because it's going to be a reversing entries. In other words, like normally I would say that sales only goes up until we close it out at the end of the time period. Cost of goods sold only goes up until we close it out. This is kind of an exception because it's a reversing entry. And so it's just a timing entry that we have. Also note that this inventory item doesn't have an item. We're not selecting an item and therefore it's not going to be able to be tracked in the subsidiary ledger in a similar fashion as accounts receivable is tracked by the customer. And we're telling it the customer so it could still track that and it won't even let us record it if we don't same with the vendors but it doesn't make us do that for the inventory it doesn't make us name what inventory item we're talking about and therefore it's possible for us to record something that will throw off the subsidiary ledger account of the types of inventory which will no longer match the inventory amount here which we've done when we did the adjusting entry and now will be fixed once we reverse it so we're going to say save and close. And so there we have, there we have that. Now, now if we look at, we're in March for the profit and loss. Now it's, it's back to zero here because that's the only transaction we have. But if we went to March 1st, if we brought this back to the first, then we'll have a negative sales and a negative cost of goods sold for a negative 100. That should make no sense. That doesn't make any sense. But the reason that is, is because we put it in there at the first, it will make sense once it matches up against the actual invoice we made, which was on uh, the second. So if we go to the second, then it matches up to zero. There's no other invoice in our example that has been input. And therefore now we're correct because that invoice that was in there, the only one belonged into the prior time period. And so once we get to the date that it was written, it, it matches up against our reversing entry and now we're correct. So in other words, we are incorrect. The financial statements are wrong for the first day of March. We are willing to accept that in order to put all of our reversing entries in as of the first day of the next month because it's easier uh, to, to go back and see what happened by doing it that way. So now let's just double check all the accounts. If we say that we, we go back, we'll make it as of the first day. There's our reversing entry to, to merchandise. If we double click on it, there it is. It's a journal entry. It's a named journal entry. And we have the memo telling us. So again, if there's a difference between the accounting department and the adjusting department, we're going to give this back to the accounting department and they're going to say, oh, that the adjusting people did that. So hopefully they didn't mess us up too bad. Hopefully they, and we'll, we'll trust them on that and make sure, and hopefully that's okay. And then this is the cost of goods sold side. 
which again is reversed here as of the first day. And we'll have the adjusting entry and reversing entry with the memo. Then let's go to the balance sheet. If we go up to the balance sheet, once again, we'll change the date to 030119. And the accounts receivable here, if we double click the accounts receivable, we'll see, okay, there's the 525. I guess it's going down, double clicking on that. Double clicking here, we'll see our journal entry. If we close that, close that, close that. Other side is going to be inventory. It went down, double click in here. Here's our journal entry. Here's our reversing entry we have. Double click in that, double click in here. There's our journal entry. Closing this back out. Uh, the last uh, piece of that is going to be the sales tax payable. And if we go here, the sales tax payable as of the first day. I picked accounts payable. That's the wrong one. Closing this back out. We want sales tax payable, which is down here. There's the there's sales tax payable. We want that one. That's the one we want. There's the 25. Double click in here, double click in there. <laughs> double click in there. We're gonna get the 25. So here's our reversing entry. It's and, and it should match up against the adjusting entry. If we close this back out and close this back out. And uh, if we were to, to take this one day back for, for each of these, these two things should match up. So we'll say ah, that we'd put it in there at the end of the month and then we reversed it. Closing this back out. If we go back to the inventory and we take this one day back, we're going to say there, there's the adjusting entry and then we reversed it. And you might say, well, what's the point if we put the adjusting entry and we reversed it? Because the point is that we're going to be correct as of the cutoff date. That's our point. That's why we want it there. And then we're going to reverse it afterwards because it's just a timing issue. So the two months will be correct no matter what after the timing. But we're making the financial statements as of this cutoff date. And therefore, that's, that's the point of it. That's why we want it to be there. And note that if you think about how people could kind of manipulate the financial statements, push the timing is one way that that can happen. And so we want to be, you know, we want to be careful that we have things recorded in the proper time period. So if we close that back out, uh, the same thing, of course, in the accounts receivable. If we take this back one day, we're going to say that uh, here's here's the 525. Here's us reversing it as of the, the next day of the next month. And then, of course, on the income statement back to the open items income statement or the open windows income statement. The merchandise, if we take this back one day, we're gonna say, okay, we, we have this uh, adjusting entry and then we reversed it as of the first day. And note that's a big difference, a big deal on the profit and loss, it's very obvious because w when we print the profit and loss for two months, this will be in a whole separate month and all the income and expenses for the prior month have closed out to the equity section. So we start off with a negative number, which is kind of unusual. And then we got the cost of goods sold. Same thing. If we take this back to the prior day, so here's our adjustment and here is the reversal of that adjustment. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.